Are you looking to learn how to make latte art like this? Well, you're in luck because in this video, I'm gonna show you. This was me today. But this was me two years ago on my first attempt at latte art. <laughs> That's a butt! <laughs> If I was able to improve my latte art skills after starting out like this, then you can definitely do it too. But first, let's start with the basics. A simple heart. It's really the foundation of any latte art. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to perfect it. First, you're gonna need a method of making a latte. I'll be using an espresso machine today. There are other ways to get a steamed milk texture, but using an espresso machine gets you the best results. You also need a pitcher. There are many different types of pitchers out there, with different shapes, different spouts, and different sizes. The shape of the spout doesn't really matter at this point because you'll find a preference later on, but you want to make sure you get the correct size pitcher where the amount of milk you use for your drink will fill about halfway up the pitcher. There are also many different types of cups you could use. These cups are about the same size, but they're shaped differently, which will affect how the milk flows into the cup as you pour. If you're just starting out with latte art, I would recommend using a cup with a rounded bottom. This ceramic cup here is my favorite cup to pour latte art into. The curvature at the bottom of the cup helps the milk flow in much more smoothly, and the opening is way bigger than the other ones, allowing you to fit more into the design. All right, let's get started. So first you wanna fill your pitcher about halfway up. I'm using water here to demonstrate, but this is a cool trick to save milk. All you need is water and a drop of dish soap. You'll be able to use this to practice to get that perfect milk texture with not too many bubbles. The better the milk texture, the better the latte art. <laughs> but anyways, make sure you purge your steam on first to get rid of that extra condensation. It's also good to have a towel nearby for quick cleaning. All right, let's start steaming. First, pull your steam on out to 45 degrees. Next, using the spout of the pitcher as a guide, insert the steam wand until the tip is just below the surface of the milk. Start at the center of the pitcher, then rotate slightly, and then tilt slightly. This will create the optimum angle to get that vortex going. Next, turn on your steam wand and aerate your milk for about three to five seconds. You'll hear a ripping sound, and once you're done, lift the pitcher like that to stop aerating. There now should be no more ripping sounds, and we're just texturing the milk. This is the process of breaking down those larger bubbles into smaller bubbles until it's all microfoam and uniform. The milk should be done when the pitcher is too hot to hold, so now you could turn off your steam wand, grab your claw, wipe your steam wand, then purge any of the milk out. Give your pitcher a quick tap to get rid of any remaining bubbles, and there you have it, silky smooth steamed milk. Remember, this was with the water and dish soap, so if you did it correctly, there shouldn't be any visible bubbles. Now, let's start pouring. You want to tilt your cup at a 45 degree angle so the spout can get closer to the surface of the espresso when it's time to make your design. But first, you need to pour from a height to mix some of the milk with the espresso. I like to pour as slow as I can and make small circles. Now it's time to start drawing your heart. Drop down as close as you can, right before the center line of the cup. At this point, you want to pour slightly faster and tilt the cup as it fills so you don't spill. Once the cup is almost full, you want to lift up and slow down your pour as you cut through your design. And there you have it. A beautiful heart. Sometimes, I see people stopping in between mixing the espresso and the milk and starting their design. There's nothing wrong with that, but you might forget how fast you were pouring before and end up pouring way too fast and mess up your design. If you're just starting out with latte art, I would recommend pouring the way I just showed you before, where after mixing, you slowly drop down until you're at the surface of the espresso. You'll remember how quickly you're pouring, and once you see your design start forming on the surface, you'll be able to easily judge if you need to pour quicker or slower. Besides your steaming and pouring skills, the type of coffee you use might actually affect how your latte art comes out in the end. Darker roasted beans will provide more crema, which makes it easier to pour latte art, while some lighter roasts might be too acidic and slightly curdles the milk. 
If your beans are too fresh, there might be way too much crema which makes your latte art look blotchy. As for milk, the higher the fat percentage, the easier it is to aerate. I've been using 2% milk and it works just fine. Skim milk might be slightly harder to start off with, but it's still doable. Now, finally, let's put everything we learned together and pour some latte art. Tap and swirl the pitcher to get rid of any remaining air bubbles, then slowly pour it into your espresso with a circular motion to mix. As your cup fills up to about halfway, lower your pitcher down slightly before the center line and pour. Speed up, lift through, and there you have it. A beautiful heart. Now, let's try it again with a different cup. Try to pour your latte art right after you steam so your milk doesn't get a chance to separate. Swirl, tap, swirl, and make sure your cup is nice and tilted. Start from high up, pour slowly, and pour in circles as you mix the espresso with the milk. Once the cup is half full, drop down, tilt the cup as you pour, lift through, and there you have it, another heart. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Now it's your turn to go pour some awesome latte art. See you next time.